Well, good Thursday morning, everybody. I'm Marlon Bowling with you, your tour guide to the ag commodity trade. Well, I want to bring on Brian Hoops right off the top here. He's the president of Midwest Market Solutions in Springfield, Missouri. Brian, you and I usually uh, cover our weekly export sales data that comes out. It's a big data dump every Thursday from USDA. But for the second time in two weeks, we don't have that to talk about today because uh, Monday was a holiday again, New Year's Day. And we're going to run into that in a couple of weeks again, too, where there will be a holiday, a legal holiday on a Monday. So it's, uh, it's kind of a bumpy start here to uh, 2024. But that being said, let's take a look at our overnight trade here. Let me bring up the uh, corn board. And our quotes are provided by bar chart here. Uh, let's see what we did overnight. It wasn't very active. We had the March corn just a half cent lower at 464 and three quarters. December was down a penny and a quarter in the overnight trade. Now in soybeans, we had March down four and three quarter cents at 1272 and a quarter. So uh, it looks like a little weaker tone there to get things rolling. And then on the November new crop month, it was down three and a quarter at 1222 per bushel here. Uh, this morning. Now, on the wheat in Chicago, we'll go with that in March. It's down three and a half cents at 596 and three quarters. So, uh, once again, we're back under that $6 benchmark there. July is down three and a quarter cents in the overnight trade. In Kansas City, you have the March contract four and three quarters lower at 616 and three quarters. And July down a nickel at 623 and a half. So no traction there. On the spring wheat in Minneapolis, March was down a penny and a half at 707, and July was down three quarters of a cent. Well, so far we keep striking out. Anything in cotton? No, it's down too. March down 23 points at 8070 per pound. So Brian, as you look at this market update here this morning, everything seems to be softer. How come? Good, good morning, Marlon. Well, you know, I think we, when you look at this market, you have to look at weather uh, here in the U.S. as well as South America. That's what is going to drive prices more than exports or really any other news uh, other than maybe the U.S. dollar during the month here. So it's a key reproductive time frame just starting in uh, in South America. Um, the forecast, which is is fairly wet over the next two weeks. Mato Grosso, which is a, a state, huge producing state of soybeans and corn in northern Brazil that's been extremely dry. It, when it was dry in, in November, we saw that big rally in, in the soybean market. We've given all of it back plus some, and that area is expected to receive up to five inches of rain over the next two weeks. So it's going to be difficult I think to rally these grain markets when you have that type of a wet forecast for most of Brazil and most of Argentina. So uh, with the market's job here, it's either to add premium into the marketplace because of bad weather or subtract it because of good weather. We've probably priced in a lot of this good weather, but as these new models come out each and every day, we're looking at those new forecasts. And if they continue to be wet out into the extended 11 to 15 day time frame, it's going to keep some pressure against these grain markets. You know, of course, wheat is probably going to react to the snow that's forecast for next week across the plains. It's going to be beneficial for the winter wheat crop to have that moisture. Plus, you have um, you know a, a, a protective blanket for the cold snap that's going to come through. So it's really kind of just looking at forecasts, and then they're not very bullish out here at, at all. Yeah, exactly. And and you were talking about the fact that we had bearish weather forecasts and and uh, outlooks in South America, but the fact that we're dumping a bunch of moisture in the U.S. key growing areas too, including um, lots of rain for the dry southeastern part in the U.S. around the Gulf. Um, that's not necessarily a bullish sign for this year's crop in the U.S. either. Yeah, you're, you're right. You know, you, it's if you're going to have a drought now, the winter is a good time to have that. But if you're going to break that drought, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to have a, a wet spring or anything. But it it is going to put some moisture into the soil and the subsoil in, in the southern plains where they can absorb it yet because you know the ground isn't frozen. So uh, yeah, you know, any moisture in that area, uh, winter wheat crop absorbing that that snow that's going to come in, that nitrogen and act as an insulation blanket. It's it's bearish, and you can see the wheat values are reacting to it. On the Dow, let's take a look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average Futures. Uh, we have been kind of hanging on every word from the Fed. I see the uh, March Dow is 93 points higher this morning. How significant is that? 
probably very insignificant at this point. You know, it's, it's choppy. It's two-sided. ADP numbers came out this morning. It was a little better than expected. We saw a very small bounce in the S&P and the Dow this morning. Then we saw prices uh, retreat a little bit. So it's real mixed, choppy trade. The dollar hasn't had much reaction to it. it you know, that's been higher four consecutive days. And now we're seeing the market kind of just settle unchanged, maybe one or two ticks higher or lower, uh, more of a mixed type market. So uh, the fact that it's not moving higher may be a minor supportive feature, but looks like I think the market's going to focus on is weather uh, at this point in time in the next couple of days. And also West Texas crude oil is up by 41 cents this morning at 73.11 per barrel as it continues to chop around. All right, we'll come back in a moment and we'll talk livestock. Brian, we invite you back after this. We're back and we're talking with Brian Hoops of Midwest Market Solutions. As we shift gears and take a look at our cattle trade here first, uh, Brian, I was scanning the wires this morning and I really didn't see anything in the way of uh, significant cash cattle trade out in the plains yesterday, did you? Yeah, I haven't seen any trade per se, maybe just a handful here and there, but nothing that's going to say this is the market for the week. But we are seeing some bids out there. The bids are coming in I, surprisingly strong. 173 being passed, that's steady with a week ago in the Southern Plains. But in the Northern Plains, we're up to 279 on a dress basis. I think last week's dress trade was around 273, so that's a significant jump, and those bids are passed. Um, 175 being bid in the in Nebraska, that's a couple dollars higher than the live trade last week. That's being passed so far. So it looks like at least in the northern in Nebraska, we're gonna see much stronger trade. Southern Plains, probably going to see at least a dollar higher. It's a surprise to me uh, that we're seeing that much strength because the show lists are bigger this week. Um, it looks like the Packers probably gonna cut kills on Saturday, or at least they will next week, trying to prop this box beef up. Uh, that keeps falling despite our production weeks being smaller, which is a real surprise. And when the Packers have to pay up for the cash markets like they did last week, possibly this week, their margins are deeply in the red. They're over $130 in the red uh, per head. So it's uh, it's not a good situation for the for the Packer right now. And I'd be very surprised if we can continue to push the cash markets higher this week into next week and, and, and continue to advance. I'm glad you brought that up. Here is a look at the beef cutouts from yesterday afternoon. And USDA said choice cuts. Wow, they dropped $6.31 again yesterday. They're down to 278.03. Let me look back at what it was a week ago. 293.31. So we're $15 under where we were a week ago now in the choice cuts. And yet the cash trade goes higher. That's that just doesn't really seem to go together to me, Brian. That that's why I'm surprised. Yeah, it it, it can't it's not something that's sustainable. It's not able to continue this move. The futures have have really rallied the early part of this week and kind of stabilized yesterday. Uh, it, you know, it's like I said, it's it's not sustainable. Fundamentals are going to drive this cattle market. And uh, I think you have to look at rallies at this point, looking at maybe a, a hedging selling opportunity right now, at least in the short term, until the margins get back in line and the cutout values can, can start to move higher. Well, yesterday <clears throat> we closed narrowly mixed on the live cattle, so they didn't do much of anything. Uh, Feb uh, February, the nearby was down about seven cents. That was it. Feeders closed higher on the nearbys. You had March up 57 cents yesterday at 227.02. And then recapping the lean hog trade, we had February, wow, down one tick <laughs> at 65.30. <laughs> Not much going on there. April was down 30 cents. May was up two. So there's that. Uh, Brian, thanks for helping us get started today. And we'll open things up here at the bottom of the hour. Appreciate that very much. We'll talk tomorrow about the oh, uh, weekly export sales numbers. Then. Sounds good. Brian Hoops of Midwest Market Solutions. That's a look at the opening comments today. We'll uh, see what the trade thinks now.